Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys five different JavaScript projects that you can do as an absolute beginner. This is great for those of you guys that are learning at home, guys who are coming in from other programming languages are now starting to learn about the web. This is great for you guys because these are actually real projects that you're going to be doing in real life. And it's just gonna help you out with your journey. All right, so let's get started. Project number one is going to be create a modal. Now we're gonna get into this, let me show you. All right, guys, so basically what is a moto? So a moto is pretty much like a pop-up that you have on your website. So let's say, for example, you could have a button, you could have a link, you could have uh, some type of element that you click on, and then from there, the moto pops up. And then in there, you could have a picture, you could have a message. Now, the thing that I also would like you guys to have is either an X button or a close button or an option to be able to click outside and be able to close the, the moto itself. Like this one doesn't actually have it. This one forces you to click on the X or the close button, right? Now you can also take it up a notch if you're very comfortable with your CSS, okay? And try to create some type of animation for your moto, something like this. Okay, this is nice, right? So this is not needed, but at the same time, it will be nice if you have some pretty cool animation. Again, the whole point of this is to practice your JavaScript so you don't have to do it and, you know, put some animations into it, but at least create a modal like this. Very simple to do. All right, guys. Project number two is actually create a drop down menu. So this right here is a drop down menu, and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this in websites that you guys have visited before. It's basically a link that when you click on it shows you a list of other links. Okay. Now, what I want you guys to do is also challenge yourself to try to create a sub menu. So when you click on here and then from there you hover on top of one of these different links, it actually shows another menu. Now you can go ahead and do this with just plain CSS, but I want you guys to try to create this with JavaScript. This is going to actually help you understand how the DOM works and just give you more practice on how to target different elements and elements that are within each other. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Now guys, if you are really enjoying this type of content, make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell, show some love. Okay guys, listen, you're gonna find a lot of great content in this channel. This channel is only about development, programming, and basically helping you guys out to make sure that you succeed as a developer. All right, so stay tuned. Let's continue with this. Project number three is create a mobile menu, and this is what we call a hamburger menu. All right, guys, now another simple project that we can do is this hamburger menu. So basically you could click on a hamburger icon, which is just pretty much three lines, right? Put together, and when you click on them, a menu pops up from the side. Now you can also go ahead and take it up a notch by going to create a menu that actually have some type of animation. So like this one, we click here and it becomes a full screen menu, just like that, all right? And then we also have this other hamburger menu where you click on it and it just comes from the top, okay? So it's actually pretty simple pretty easy to do all right i know you guys have seen this in every website if you ever went to a website through your phone most likely they have a hamburger menu and this is pretty much the standard now with web development all right project number four create a form and set up some basic form validation i'm gonna show you right now what it is all right guys so now let's talk about form validation so let's say for example you have a form you want to make sure that the user fills out the form before you submit it so this is a great way for you guys to practice so for example let's say this person came in and didn't fill out any of the information they click on sign up automatically it says hey this field needs to be uh, filled out so this field is required this one's required, right? The phone number is not required, but the password is required. So let's say the person goes in, put in Joe, and let's say Joe at gmail.com, right? Puts in their information. And as you can see, as we type, right? It could tell that, hey, this is actually an email, okay? So also too, if I wanted to check to see if this thing was a proper email, right? 
you want to check that this thing is actually looking like a real email so you could do validation on that so as you can see it says please enter a valid email address okay so this is something that you guys can definitely do okay uh same thing for the password you can have uh, like let's say a minimum of six characters so let's say if i come here i put in two four five six seven okay it automatically tells me hey your password should be at least six characters long so it's counting how many characters i have here and at the same time if you guys wanted to go even further you could even say hey man you need to have a special character you need to have two numbers you need to have uh some regular text like you could go ahead and do that with rejects and but of course that's if you want to go to the extra mile just as long as you can validate that hey somebody put in their name somebody put in their email somebody put in their phone number or it could be even just a password, right? Like you don't even have to add the phone number. But once again, if you wanna go the extra mile, you could use rejects to check the password, see if it's a secure password. You can also use rejects to check if the phone number is actually a valid phone number. You can do all of these things, it's up to you. But at least go ahead and create a form that checks to see if the user is actually putting their name, putting in a valid email, and putting in a password with minimum six characters okay if you can do that you're good to go project number five is create a pokedex i know it sounds crazy but trust me this is going to help you understand javascript and also ajax now you're probably asking yourself a pokedex like this is stupid right like why would I be building this little kid thing, right? Well, it's actually super helpful because it's gonna help you understand how to work with APIs and how to get data and actually display some information or some type of images or something on the screen depending on the data that you get from that server. So for example, this is the Poke API. You can take this route and go into, let's say, pokeapi.co slash api slash v2 slash pokemon slash ditto. And then what that would do is it will actually give you a whole JSON, right? So I'm just going to do it for you guys just so you guys can see what's it actually going to return back to you. So take this and then paste this here. And then from there, when you go there, it's actually a JSON. All of this is data that you can use and you can actually use it for your project. Now, I want you guys to build a Pokedex, something that you can say, hey, I want to search for a specific uh, Pokemon. And then from there, you return back the image, the information about the Pokemon. It doesn't have to be as pretty as this or, you know, as detailed as this. But as long as you're able to show that, hey, you were able to pull that data from that server, that's good enough. OK, but at least, you know, try to push yourself also, too. Right. So as you can see, this thing shows you every side of the Pokemon. I could come here and search for number seven, which is Squirtle. I could search for uh pikachu the actual name of the pokemon and it actually shows it and displays it for me so all of this is being done by doing get requests to this poke api every single one of you guys can actually do this all right guys so i hope you guys have really enjoyed that video i also want to let you guys know about this website called codingphase.com basically it's a website that i created i've been working on it for the last three years right i basically put in over 50 courses and you get access to all of them everything from html css javascript php ruby you know node.js react angular pretty much like almost everything that you will see on a job listing I have it there and it's super cheap right you start with $20 per month and if you act now and you click on the description you're gonna get 50% off now that I told you about codingphase.com it's up to you if you want to sign up or not but trust me a lot of people have loved it so go check it out at least try it out all right you also get a seven-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it hey you get your money back all right so anyways guys I want you guys to go and continue checking out the other videos i might have it here i might have it here right i have a video where i basically talk about the four mistakes that you need to avoid as a javascript developer as a junior developer etc right it doesn't matter what type of developer you are you need to watch that video because you need to avoid those mistakes especially when you're learning at home now in the next video that i have here is basically me talking about you know my eight years as a developer working for different companies and things that i wish i would have known before i got into the industry and things that i wish somebody would have told me all right so definitely go check them out 
All right, guys. So anyways, man, I'm going to see you guys later. It's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com.